Hey puzzle friends, how's it going? Welcome back, or if you're new, I'm Jiwi and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be going through all the puzzles that I completed for the month of November. So this video was actually supposed to come out last month during December, but life had other plans and I got quite sick and wasn't able to uh, film and release a lot of videos that I had actually planned, so that was a bit sad. So I am playing catch up a bit and I will be uh, obviously putting out this video, but also hopefully the November haul will be coming out very soon as well as well as the December roundup and haul videos too. So keep an eye out for those over the next couple of weeks. So for this video, there'll be puzzles that uh, I did for Instagram, some that I did for videos, some that I just felt like doing. I think a couple that I did with a friend as well. And for each uh, puzzle, I'll be giving you, uh, you know, a quick review, just my thoughts and what my experience was like. And then at the very end of the video, I'll let you know which puzzle was my least favorite and which was my favorite. And if there's any puzzles you're curious about, don't forget to check the description box below because I will be listing all their details there. So there's not too many puzzles to go through for this monthly roundup, just uh, this stack here and one other stack. So I think there's about 13 puzzles all up, something like that. And I've just grouped them based on their brands. So first I'm going to talk about a invisible puzzle. Ooh, spooky. Um, I don't have it here just because I've actually lent it to a friend at the moment. So it is by Unidragon and it's the, uh, what's it called? Iridescent Chameleon, I'm pretty sure. And it's the king size version. And I believe it's 314 pieces. If any of that information is wrong, I'll correct that on the screen, but I think that's right. And yeah, I really enjoyed this puzzle. Um, they actually very kindly sent it to me for just to try out and do a review if I wanted. So I did that one over on Instagram and yeah, it was a really just a uh, beautiful puzzle. Like I was able to choose the design and I'd been eyeing off this like really gorgeous, colorful chameleon for ages. So I was like, better, better try that one. And yeah, I really, I'm really glad that I did. Yeah. The colors are just so vibrant that yeah, just as vibrant as if you see pictures of it on the website. Uni Dragon, or you see it on Instagram, it's it really is that vibrant and just so colorful and yeah, very eye catching. So, a lot of fun, and the patterns look really awesome as well. And yeah, the level of detail um, in the Uni Dragon puzzles is just unbelievable. Like, of course, uh, if you are familiar with wooden puzzles, they tend to have lots of irregular shaped pieces, but also little whimsy pieces, so little fun shaped pieces that tend to be like related to the theme of what the puzzle images so there were little chameleons and lizards and like little tropical things there was even a banana so the little fruits and trees flowers like tropical birds things that you know would hang out with a chameleon i guess um, but yeah there were really cute little whimsies uh, but like the pieces weren't just cut out bits of wood they even had uh like extra levels of detail in them so just like each whimsy for example would even have little extra cutout bits to like show more detail of that whimsy. So like you might, instead of just a cutout of a bird, it would be like extra bits in the whimsy to show the wing and like some feathers, things like that. Yeah, really like a really high level of detail. And then uh, within the chameleon puzzle, there were like, there was like an extra, uh, like there were a couple of mini puzzles. So there was like, a chameleon which was made up of some of the other shapes within the chameleon so yeah really clever very like well done um, I was really really impressed and um, I've got a couple of other uni dragon puzzles waiting in my collection for me so I'm very excited to be doing those sometime hopefully soon so yeah really loved it very high quality uh, if you've never done one I, I would totally recommend like getting your hands on one even if you have to borrow it from a friend because they it is a really cool experience um, so yeah, loved that one. And then let's go through what we've got here. So this next puzzle is from, uh, it's called the Good Puzzle Co. And that's actually uh, like one of Gallison's brands. And it's meant to be their more like, I guess, low key, environmentally friendly brand. Like, uh, you know, everything's very like recyclable. Um, and even the bag it comes in, is like one of those compostable sort of plastic bags. But anyway, this puzzle is 500 pieces and it is called Dogs and Flowers. And I've actually got a, the sort of same design, but cats. Um, but yeah, I did this with a friend. Um, we were just, yeah, wanted to chill out together and do some puzzles. So we decided to do this one because it was just such a cute one. And yeah, it's just made up of like lots of colorful squares and each one's got a different type of cute little doggy in it and just all different plants. So yeah, just 
pretty simple but really just really cute like the I'm a cat person but I think these dogs look very cute um, so we've got like I don't know dog breeds but we've got what a corgi a Dalmatian um, like a Jack Russell Terrier I think is that a terrier a Dutch hound or sausage dog as I prefer to call them because it's much cuter um, I think a French Bulldog and you know other cute dogs as well that I don't know the breeds of but yeah it's just a really lovely puzzle very sweet and actually it's kind of funny because normally I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with normal Gallison puzzles because I don't like the white paper backing and um, yeah I find there's they often get the pieces get damaged and that sort of thing but I always find that from my experience doing a couple of puzzles uh, from the Good Puzzle Co by Gallison, I prefer the pieces in this because they're more simple. So they're still, like this one was still, if you've done a 500 piece Gallison before, they're often square and kind of large and the pieces are large and quite like elongated in their shape. Um, so this is kind of the same as that, but the pieces are like thinner, but have just a cardboard backing, no extra paper, and they still hold together quite well. Um, and the surface is like less kind of hard and glossy. Um, so I feel like the pieces are actually nicer because they seem to be I haven't had like damaged pieces with this at all and they hold together nicely and Yeah, I think just overall in some ways because this is simpler and they haven't Gone and fussed with the white paper backing this turned out nicer. So yeah, definitely. Yeah, if you can again, like I recommend Giving this little brand a try. There's not too many designs available unfortunately um, But there's a few out but yeah this one and there's a cat one. So yeah, but yeah, really, really liked it, had fun. And then this next one is a Gallison one. Well, actually it's Mud Puppy, so another Gallison brand, I guess the more kids uh, brand, but I always think they have the coolest design. So this is also a 500 piece sort of square one, basically uh, similar to the last one where it's got like the large pieces that are kind of that weird elongate, elongated shape, can't talk. Um, but yeah, this is like Gallison as well, where the pieces are like, have a white paper backing and uh, a, a kind of thick and have like a hard kind of shiny surface so yeah but this one was actually uh, from memory quite uh, like in good condition like there I didn't really have any damaged pieces with it so very happy about that and the pieces still held together really well um, I forgot to completely tell you <laughs> the name of this this is, this is called hungry plants fly traps and other carnivorous plants. And yeah, so the design is very vibrant and colorful and yeah, just features uh, all these little, yeah, like carnivorous plants, like fly traps, that sort of thing. I don't know what they're all called, although it does actually have little names here for them in very teeny tiny writing. So that's kind of cool, but yeah, it's really cutely done. I love the style um, and love the bright colors. And there's even little critters in here too. There's like some little lizard and a little fly that's probably about to be eaten and little mosquitoes and a weird frog thing um, yeah so it's just a really quite a fun vibrant um, kind of whimsical image so yeah I thought that was really cool it definitely caught my eye and I had a lot of fun doing this one so I didn't really learn too much about plants <laughs> but because uh, I was just uh, too busy enjoying the imagery and and just yeah having fun putting it together yeah, so for Gallison, I was pretty pleased with this one. Yeah, quite happy with it and thought it was a lot of fun. Um, so next up, we've got a couple here from Wentworth Wooden Puzzles. So this one is 250 pieces and it's called Weekend in Blue Shark Hotel. Um, and yeah, this is just, this is one I started with my friend. We didn't get to finish it, so I ended up finishing it at home. Um, and I really like this design i think the colors are just really interesting like i love the blue and the pops of like really vibrant pops of red and little bits of yellow like it's just really like eye-catching as well and it's a really fun quirky image it's just all these like um well it looks like there's like a family sort of bike riding together like dad mum, and like three kids and they're sort of cycling past the i guess what blue shark hotel but yeah it looks like they're in some sort of little village or town that's near the water, maybe a lake or the ocean, I guess, since there's like a, I guess, little yacht or sailboat out there and there's even a train and yeah, it just looks like a really cute, quaint little place that they've gone on vacation. Um, and I guess the, it's at night or something because the moon's out. But yeah, I really like the colors. It's really cool. And I like the sort of, I don't know how you describe this art style, but it's quite interesting. So yeah, I really enjoyed that. It had lots of fun whimsies as well. 
Um, unfortunately, one little whimsy was kind of broken, which seems to be a running theme lately. <laughs> I've had a few broken whimsies, but um, nothing that, you know, I that wasn't, it wasn't too much of an issue. It was just, um, there was like a bird and its poor little head had snapped off, um, but it was still all complete and all there. So I didn't lose any pieces, so that was good. And I can probably just fix it with some like wood glue or something or super glue, maybe, maybe wood glue. Um, so it wasn't a big deal, but I was, a, first I was worried that I'd lost part of the piece, but no, it was all good. But yeah, apart from that though, I, yeah, had a lot of fun and I really like this one. And I can definitely see myself doing it again. So yeah, really, yeah, just a really beautiful image and yeah, beautiful quality. So I uh, went with wooden puzzles, uh, also uh, just really beautiful wooden puzzles like Unidragon, they are different, but yeah, lovely piece shapes, yeah, beautiful whimsies. Uh, usually, apart from the broken bit, very like good quality and no like laser scorch marks or anything like that. So yeah, and I'm pretty sure, yeah, their whimsies tend to have little detailed bits etched or cut into them as well. So yeah, really yeah, impressed. Um, yeah, just a beautiful, fun puzzle to do. And then we've got another beautiful Wentworth wooden puzzle here. So this one's called Strolling Home um, and it is 500 pieces. And this one is just, just really cute and kind of heavy actually. Just a really uh, beautiful image. Um, it's, I did this one over on Instagram and yeah, it's just such a really fun image for spring or maybe even summer. But yeah, it's all these beautiful flowers. So I think it's like wisteria hanging down and I don't know what all these flowers are, but they're just really pretty and vibrant colors. And just, yeah, it looks like a beautiful sort of garden. And there's a path down here. I've got two little hedgehogs, like a, I guess, a adult hedgehog and a little baby one, just wandering, I guess, strolling home. And I'm not exactly sure where they live, but I guess on the way there's like, what looks like a little birdhouse there. But yeah, it just looks very idyllic and whimsical and just a really charming image. And I really enjoyed the whimsies in this one as well. There were, of course, cute little hedgehogs in there and flowers and birds and yeah, very pretty. Um, yeah, really enjoyed this one. Also, this one was very good quality as well. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, I can see myself doing this one again too. So yeah, very pretty and yeah, just really love this one. And then we've got a soonness one here. So this one is Marine Life and it's 1000 pieces. Um, and this is like one of the sort of OG soonness puzzles, like from her life series, I think what she had forest life, marine life and Arctic life. And so that feels like a long time ago now, I guess it kind of was, but yeah, still really love these. Um, and I hadn't done this one, even though I've had it in my collection for a while. Um, and it's just really fun. So I guess this is not the whole image. The whole image is on the back. Um, and yeah, it's just got, it says marine life in the middle and then just has all these really cute uh, characters. Um, so we've got like an all little fun shenanigans going on underwater. So we've got a actual marathon with all these fish with their little like, um, what do you call it? Like running bibs with their numbers, their marathon numbers on. So they're doing a race up there and we've got a couple of dolphins like taking photos and we've got an octopus up here relaxing on a like beach chair and like enjoying multiple drinks since uh this guy's got multiple arms i guess tentacles um we've got a mermaid we've got a little fish getting ready um yeah all sorts of like we've got like a bodybuilding turtles and crabs and you know uh, sharks that are very uh into dental hygiene yeah all sorts of really fun stuff and then the other thing that's in uh, the life series puzzles is there's this little character called I guess Nina I think and it's this little girl with black hair and there's always uh, like it says Nina's 1000 puzzle and there's always I think like 10 of them um, in here I think yeah hello I am Nina welcome to my marine life I'm hiding in 10 different spots I hope you find me as you put the puzzle together good luck so there's like 10 little Ninas hiding around the place. So it's always fun to sort of spot what she's up to. Like I can see one up here drinking a martini, you know, hiding and relaxing with this octopus. And uh, yeah, all sorts of like cute little Ninas hidden around the place. So I thought that's a really fun uh, like aspect or bonus with this puzzle. Like not only do you get a really cute, fun, uh, whimsical puzzle, but you get little, like an extra activity you can do too. So yeah, really love these. And I quite like the quality, like um, the quality is different to the recent uh, pick and pre-order puzzles or PMP puzzles. 
so it is like uh, a bit the pieces are a bit more on the more cardboardy and a bit more on the thin side so they have a cardboard backing they're probably more thin to medium or medium thickness um, they they hold together quite well um, and they have like a more matte linen finished top like a more cardboardy papery top um, but yeah I quite like the pieces I think they are, are really nice quality even though they are different I guess like the current PMP puzzles tend to be more luxe and higher quality but I still thought the quality of these are quite nice so yeah I really enjoyed putting this one together and just thought it was a really yeah fun and interesting puzzle to do and loved reading all the sassy little comments that are that all the characters are saying so yeah really fun still totally recommend these even if they're older I think they still really stand up and are just yeah a great puzzling experience and then the last one from this pile is this gorgeous one from Ebu or Ebu Peace and Love 500 pieces it's called Garden of Eden and it's a big square puzzle it even has a artist playlist included which I didn't listen to but maybe I should um, but yeah this one is really gorgeous um, yeah I said it's called Garden of Eden <laughs> goodness um, but yeah it's this really busy sort of collage image with all these beautiful flowers plants birds crystals um, what else some animals like a little monkey and an armadillo I think and like I think there's a snake maybe there's parrots yeah there's like so much going on it's really busy like so much for the eye to explore and look at and I ordered this puzzle because I just thought it was a beautiful image and then I was even more pleasantly surprised when it arrived to discover that the background behind everything is this, not only this lovely kind of bluey steely blue gray color but it's metallic and yeah the pieces themselves are actually shiny metallic so yeah I thought that was a really like beautiful effect just thought it was yeah really gorgeous um, so I've had mixed feelings with Ebu um, because when I very like well, I guess a couple years ago now when I did my very first Ebu puzzles I was like oh they're too glossy I'm not sure about this glossy puzzles are evil la 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 but I've come to really love them so even though I still don't I still prefer my puzzle pieces to be more on the matte side there's something about Ebu pieces that I find they just feel very special so the pieces themselves are like very uh, I guess like very sturdy medium sort of thickness or even chunky but they almost feel like they're glossy to the point of being like varnished or lacquered they feel very special they're not just like a shiny cardboard they're just they're very hard very sturdy even the backing paper is like varnished so they feel quite like little bits of treasure or yeah like they feel quite special so I kind of feel like because these are just beautiful quality beautiful images and the sort of glossiness is because like they have this real varnished effect I feel like I can make an exception and I have forgiven them because they are quite special and so I will put up with the glossiness in these because they're just such lovely puzzles and the quality is really nice and yeah gorgeous they work with a lot of really talented artists and just have such a gorgeous range of like designs um, yeah so I really enjoyed this one thought it was just a really beautiful puzzle um, love just dis like discovering lots of little details as I puzzled along and even when I was taking photos of the puzzle I found more and more things to that I hadn't seen before so yeah I really love this one um, I've even like done another puzzle by the same artist who is Claire Celeste Birch since then and really enjoyed that one too I think by a different company but yeah beautiful imagery so yeah definitely uh, have you know EB puzzles have definitely grown on me in a big way and I've got quite a few in my collection now so uh, yeah if you've never tried one I definitely recommend it because it's quite an interesting experience and yeah maybe the glossy pieces aren't for everyone but they are very luxurious and uh, you know feel really nice to handle so still worth trying them out just for that um, yeah so that is this pile of puzzles complete so let's go on to the next pile so let's go through this stack so this first one is by Pomegranate Art Piece Puzzle. Um, this is called Rainbow Falls. It's only 500 pieces and it's by the artist Elsie Armstrong. And I, uh, you can probably tell why I was drawn to this image. It's just really pretty and colorful and just thought it was a really interesting image. Like at first it looks like just lots of flowers, but actually there's all these like really interesting little uh, things hidden in it. Well, I guess things I should say, mostly animals. Although, so we've got like a pink elephant here and we've got like a little polar bear. A zebra that's pink or turning pink which I'll explain that in a minute uh, a little deer 
And then down the, oh, we even have a little sneaky kitty cat hiding out here. Down here, this is a bit quirky. We've got a young girl holding a fish bowl with goldfish on her head. So that's weird. And then over here, we've got a little monkey with a, a paintbrush in its mouth and with a paint palette on its head. Also equally weird, but interesting. So I don't know what it's all about, but it's very fantastical and whimsical and just really beautifully done. So why I was saying I'll get talk about this, like, I guess, pink elephant and pink zebra in a minute is there's also amongst the flowers, I realized there's little colored pools of, I guess, water because this is the rainbow falls. So it seems like from this sort of body of water and these rainbow waterfalls, little colored pools of water have sort of formed. And it seems like maybe the color of water that you're drinking is the color that you turn. So we've got this zebra drinking from a little pink pool of water and it seems to be turning pink. And I think this elephant might have been drinking from the same pool. And we've got a little deer over here that's turning yellow and it's drinking from a little yellow pool of water. So yeah, pretty interesting, quite kind of surreal and a bit dreamlike, a bit weird, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. And as for the quality, um, pomegranate have pretty nice quality puzzles. They have like, uh, this one had larger pieces cause it was a 500 piece one. So their 500 piece puzzles are a bit bigger, I guess, or not, uh, or have bigger piece shapes. Um, so the pieces are like a gray board um, and they have a very like matte linen finish, like they're very cardboardy and they fit together really nicely. Um, do they hold together? I think they, it was a bit hit and miss as to whether you could pick up sections, maybe very gently, but um, I don't think I could do a puzzle pickup, so it's still a bit crumbly. Um, but yeah, it's still very nice puzzle pieces. But yeah, very nice experience. And I just thought this image was just, yeah, really, really lovely. And then we've got uh, a 1000 piece one here from uh, Journey of Something, which is an Australian brand. And this is called the Flora Plus Edition. Ah, actually, uh, so you know how I was just talking about that Ebu puzzle and I said, oh, I've just also done another uh, like puzzle design by the same artist, but a different brand. This is the one I was thinking of. So yes, by the artist Claire Celeste Birch. Um, yeah, and this is called the Flora Plus Edition. Um, can't, they, can't see much of the image on the box, which I kind of find annoying about this brand. I uh, this brand has some really lovely images, but like why? Since they have like a blank back of the box, you'd think they'd put the whole image on the back. No, instead it's annoyingly, uh, the box has this kind of annoying flap, which looks cool, but then your image is here and it's uh, really annoying to keep referring to the inside of the box. So yeah, it does come in a lovely fabric drawstring bag though. Anyway, that's just my gripes about the packaging. <laughs> But apart from that, um, they have, yeah, it was a beautiful um, puzzle image. Yeah, it was just, had a lot of snakes in it. So if you don't like snakes, maybe skip this bit. But yeah, it had like, uh, what's it got in there? Like some beautiful like orchid flowers, like a bit sort of tropical. There's like different snakes, which I don't mind, but I know some people aren't into snakes for, I guess, various reasons. And there's lots of little crystals and rocks. So yeah, kind of a bit of a different theme than that other Ebu puzzle design, but yeah, quite beautiful. And this was quite challenging to put together because um, like up close, when you're just seeing like an individual piece, the the part of the design on the piece, like it could, it's really hard to tell where it goes because it's like bits of a rock or close up of a flower or close up of a snake. And you're like, which bit is it? So it was a quite, a, yeah, quite a bit challenging, but a really beautiful, stunning image, quite intriguing and interesting, yeah, quite different. And then as for the quality, uh, I kind of have mixed feelings about the journey of something quality because these are quite expensive puzzles here in Australia. They're usually like 50 or $60 brand new. Although I got this from a puzzle swap from a friend, so that's good. Um, but they have paper backing, which I'm not the biggest fan of. Um, and the pieces are sort of got a hard top and it's a bit glossy. Um, they do actually fit together pretty well and you can kind of move sections around somewhat easily. So not too bad. But yeah, sometimes I find the paper does get a bit bent or torn on the back of these puzzles. So uh, yeah, mixed feelings, but um, for the most part, this was okay. Even for like a puzzle, I guess that had been done before, it was still in quite good condition. So yeah, pretty happy with it. Um, but yeah, beautiful image and yeah, I'm ha yeah, happy with it, I guess. So. 
And then we've got a really gorgeous magnolia puzzle here. So this one's 1,000 pieces and it's called uh, Midnight Blue by the artist Laverin. Um, and this was a really challenging one actually. Uh, they actually have a star rating on their boxes and it says four out of five. And yeah, I think I would agree with that. This was quite tricky, but really beautiful. Just a stunning image. So uh, Magnolia partway through last year released, like revealed and released a whole collection, like heaps of brand new puzzles. And there were like six uh, in this style, this sort of manga, kind of Japanese manga drawn style by this artist Leverin. Um, and yeah, I thought this was just a really gorgeous one. So of course, added it to my collection. And I just love the sort of inky blues and indigos, purples, teals, just it's so pretty. And the level of detail is really like, just really awesome. Like there's all these little intricate flower patterns and little lace work on her outfit. And then you realize like, she's not just a like normal person. She sort of got these like butterfly fairy wings. And then you realize the little birds aren't just birds. They have uh, butterfly wings and they sort of tails, they have like long lacy veils. So it's quite a little bit surreal and dreamlike as well. But yeah, really, really beautiful. Um, yeah, just gorgeous. And um, I, I end up getting all the others by the same artist in from Magnolia Puzzle. So excited to do those as well. I think they're, they're all looking pretty tricky too, just because of the level of detail in those as well. So yeah, beautiful image. Um, and yeah, glad to have done it. Um, and I have really been enjoying Magnolia Puzzles. I kind of, I think first sort of got into them last year and I was like, why did I not try these sooner? Um, so basically they have cardboard backing, they're pretty nice medium thickness. And then they have this like really kind of like what the box is coated with. They have a very smooth surface, but, and when you touch it, you feel like, oh, it's definitely gonna be glossy, but it's not, it's like completely matte. I don't know what the magic is behind this, um, but it's really impressive and it makes puzzling really nice. Um, and yeah, so I really love like whatever they do to the surface coating. It's yeah, it's really amazing. It's like really feels like it should be glossy, but it's completely matte. So fantastic. And yeah, the pieces hold together really well, very like comfortable sort of snug to comfortable fit and you can move sections around and do puzzle pickups. And yeah, I, I really like the brand. I've been very impressed by their puzzles. Um, and I love their new designs as well. I think they've got a lot of really gorgeous uh, designs in the new collection. So if you've not tried a Magnolia, I would highly recommend it because I think the quality is just really nice. And um, like, I don't know about in other countries, but at least here, the price is pretty reasonable. It's not too, too expensive. It might be a bit more than a Ravensburger, but I think it's well worth it because you just get just a beautiful puzzle and beautiful quality for that price. Anyway, um, enough rambling about this one. I, I really liked it. And then what have we got next? Okay, we've got this Ravensburger one here that looks like it's seen better days. <laughs> so this was uh, the poor thing got injured in transport, uh, sent by Amazon, of course. So <laughs> poor thing was badly injured, um, but it is a very beautiful image. So this one is called, I guess it's, it's sort of, yeah, it's called the South Downs, but it's walking world number one. Um, but yeah, it's this beautiful, um, very pretty and just a really lovely, sweet image of, I guess like the British countryside. Um, I can't remember, like, I think when I showed this in a haul video last year, um, there were some people who said, like it's got this sort of white figure up here on the hill. And I think there's a couple places or a few places in the UK that have these and they were, this was identified where in the UK it was, but um, I don't know why I'm telling you this because I actually can't remember where that was. So there we go. Anyway, it's a beautiful image. It's like the British countryside. It's, you know, these lovely green hills, all these like wildflowers. Yeah, very, very pretty little butterflies and bumblebees, I guess, or bees. Um, We've got different like an owl and a hawk and, and this lovely, I guess it's a hare, not a rabbit, I think, or it could be a rabbit, I don't know. Um, and we've got like a lizard and yeah, and I, oh, and we've actually got a couple of sneaky people here walking up to like a, I guess like a farm gate, that sort of thing. So yeah, there are people in it too, but they're quite subtle, which is good because I'm not usually the biggest fan of 
like realistic people in puzzles. I know that's kind of weird, but I guess I prefer like either more stylized cartoony people or like, yeah, not so much like realistically drawn people, but they're so tiny, so I'll pretend they're not there. <laughs> But yeah, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was just a really lovely image. It was a bit challenging because there's a lot of green and a lot of flowers, so that did take a bit of time to put together. Um, yeah, and despite the box being damaged, the puzzle itself was in perfect condition. Um, and yeah, I guess classic Ravensburger where blue board backing, a lot of puzzle dust, pieces fit pretty nicely together. Um, I guess like the surface is pretty nice, but sometimes there's a little bit of sheen or gloss, but not overly glossy um yeah overall pretty nice quality so yeah just a lovely very spring kind of puzzle i guess and then we've got another one here with a sad box so this one was actually given to me for free at, at a puzzle swap they were just like please take it if you want it it got water damage so the poor box is a yeah seen better days um but the puzzle itself was in like all the pieces are in perfect condition so this is by the by Water and Wines, and this is their Italy puzzle, 1,000 piece wine puzzle. Um, and yeah, their puzzles are really nice. They do these sort of maps of different parts of the world that have wine, but they've sort of been extending that to like beer. And I did, I've got a Scotch whiskey one, and um, I think there's like, oh, there's a champagne one as well. But yeah, I hadn't done the whiskey one, so I was like, I mean, the Italy wine one, I apologize, hadn't done that one. So I was like, yeah, why not? Um, so yeah, this was like, a uh, pretty fun one to do, but uh, not quite as exciting. I think this was like one of their more original designs. And like having done the Scotch whiskey one since, oh, and the California one since, those ones are a lot more colorful and have a lot more interesting imagery. So this one is more map-like. It does have a few little like images here and there, like little bottles of wine and a little cruise ship and someone like uh, on a pool floaty and, you know bits of food and like a few characters from like famous characters from different parts of Italy things like that and some like architecture and stuff like Leaning Tower of Pisa and Colosseum and things like that but um, the colors are more subdued in this one and there's not quite as much exciting things going on but it's still you know there's still a, like a lot of little things to discover and uh, lots of little like wine different tells you the different wine regions and things like that um, so yeah, still like a fun puzzle, but I probably didn't enjoy it quite as much as like some of their more recent releases. I think those are just uh, way more fun, to be honest, I guess. But yeah, still a lovely puzzle though, especially if you love Italy and wine. Definitely think it's a, a great design. And then the other thing about the Water and Wines puzzles is, so okay, ignore the poor damaged box. Um, the box and the pieces all have these, this like really nice soft silicon touch, like very buttery or velvet touch. So if you've done an art and fable puzzle, it's exactly the same as that. Same pieces. I think they're probably even made in the same factory or by the same manufacturer because they have that, yeah, exactly the same. So if you've done that, same as that. Um, so yeah, the pieces are just this really, the surface is just this lovely, soft, velvety, buttery touch. And it's completely matte as well. So very good for taking photos and it means you don't have any sheen or glare. So that's really good. Um, and the pieces fit pretty nicely together. Sometimes false fits, but not too bad. They're kind of more on the thin to medium side, but they have just a nice cardboard back, no paper. So yeah, I'm quite a fan of this brand and Art and Fable as well. And then the other thing that is really interesting with this brand is they put sort of extra educational information about wine. So on the back here, we've got different types of wines. Um, it tells you like the tasting notes. And I think on the inside, there's like the different glasses for wines. And yeah, they put in like a lot of extra illustrations and little sort of tidbits and factoids about wine or about stuff related to your wine puzzle so i think that's really cool it's definitely like a really good gift idea for anyone who's like into a particular type of wine or drink so yeah i really like it um yeah despite the the box it was a really great puzzle to do and yeah enjoyed it and then we have one more left Ugh. we have another one puzzle okay this one so one of the things that i don't like about this puzzle is I guess it's similar to Unidragon actually. The lid is, it just sort of pops on, but it also means it pops off very easily. So maybe I'll just pop this here. Anyway, so this 
one was gifted to me to try out uh, on this channel actually so you can watch the video on this I'll link it up here um, so this is the wood best uh, mandala dash four very colorful rainbow mandala puzzle and this was oh, what size was you so like uh, a lot of wooden puzzles you can choose like what size or the amount of pieces so pretty sure it's on the side here oh yes okay this is the extra large size 20 by 20 inches um, 680 pieces so I did choose the larger size um, so ooh, I'm pulling apart this box um, so yeah it was quite challenging but I think it was well worth it because it was just such a stunning image and a lot of fun to put together um, and as you can see yeah so I guess one thing that I'm like 50 eh, 50 about is the packaging um, even with uni dragon they have very similar box style and I the the lids always are a pain to put on and they pop off so this is the same kind of thing um, and like Unidragon it has like this the piece your pieces are escaping um, they have this sort of hessian like fabric that wraps around the pieces or inside lines the box um, but this one came with like a quite a cute little like mini easel which you can pop your lid on um, as your reference picture so I thought that was kind of cool um, I didn't end up using it that much because I just figured like it was just easier if I just you know pick up the lid and look at it closely instead of having it like I wanted to pick it up too much so I didn't really end up using that but I think it's a cute idea um, but yeah like other wooden puzzles it has lots of irregular shaped pieces but also lots of really cute whimsy pieces and because this is a mandala um, it's more like a spiritual kind of thing so yeah a lot of the pieces were like you know people meditating or like other sort of spiritual slash religious kind of symbols like yin and yang kind of thing and um, lots of things that I didn't even really know what they were but I thought they were still really interesting yeah and like people dancing or moving like yeah things that I just thought were fairly related um, and as well as like some flowers and like lotus flowers things like that so yeah it was quite interesting but yeah quite enjoyed this one um, yeah I thought the quality was fairly nice the pieces are definitely a bit thinner than some other wooden puzzles like they're probably more thin to medium um, still quite sturdy although there was if you watch the video spoilers this one had a little broken piece as well but it was all there and actually didn't impact the final um, puzzle image and can easily be glued back together with wood glue um, but it was just because that shape was a bit on the thin side like it was a the stem of a flower so but as you've seen, well, as you've heard from me, even with a Wentworth, you can still get broken pieces. So I guess it just happens in all puzzles, like, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, so I think the thickness of these isn't quite as thick as Wentworth um, or Unidragon. It is more on the thinner side, but it was still, for the most part, pretty nice quality. And some of these, even these, they still had like a pretty high level of detail, like extra bits of detail cut into the whimsies to give them a bit more like character I guess or or detail um, but I did find this had more of the sort of laser scorch marks which apparently you can remove pretty easily if you want to they don't bother me too much but um, somehow like uh, both Union Dragon and Wentworth tend to be able to like get rid of or they don't have those sort of scorch marks but this one did but like I said it doesn't bother me too much but I guess it just shows that maybe Wentworth this compared to like Wentworth and like Unidragon doesn't quite have the same high level of like attention to detail or quality as those maybe but it was still a really nice puzzle and I really enjoyed it and was definitely uh, happy and thankful to have the opportunity to try it out um, yeah they have some really cool designs so I could definitely see myself doing more from this brand um, yeah I was I think overall very impressed with it and yeah I just thought this image was beautiful and actually had a hard time choosing because they let me choose whichever design I wanted but I had quite a few and I was like umming and ahhing so they definitely have a lot of really fun colorful beautiful designs to choose from but yeah end up with this one and don't regret it but yes uh, typical me fashion pick the hard challenging one to do of course uh, but yeah so really enjoyed it and I think that's pretty much all I have to say um, so that is everything for the month of November hello it's editing GB here uh, so I totally forgot to include this puzzle in the rest of the video so let's quickly go over it now um, so this is a jumbo puzzle 1000 pieces and it's called cat horoscope and you can probably uh, guess why I uh, chose this one it's just 
full of beautiful, uh, beautifully illustrated kitty cats. I'm not really a big Zodiac horoscope fan, although I, I do quite like the associated imagery. But yeah, I just think the cats are just so, uh, yeah, beautifully drawn and each little Zodiac cat, or I guess cats if we're looking at Gemini, it's just really gorgeous. And um, I guess I'm not a huge fan of fur normally, but I think it's done really well here. And obviously you've got just little sections of fur. You don't have the whole thing being fur. And there's lots of different colorful cats. So yeah, quite a lot of variety, but yeah, it's just really beautifully done. And there's so much detail, like even the ornate borders and and that's my cat Rogue in the background telling me to hurry up because it's nearly snack time. I'm sorry, Rogue, we'll get there in a minute. We just got to finish with these cats first. Um, but yeah, just, yeah, beautiful flowers, the like gold stars, even the little zodiac symbols and yeah, just really beautifully done. So this definitely caught my eye and it was a, just a really beautiful puzzle to put together and a lot of fun. Perfect for any cat lover. Uh, my cat says she doesn't care about these cats. She's the only cat. Excuse me, that's very rude. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, it's been a while since I've done a jumbo puzzle. I do have one other one in my collection, but it's definitely over 20 years old. And I, I remember it being pretty good quality and very, very beautiful image, but I'm sure things have changed a bit since then. But um, that being said, I did quite enjoy the quality of this. So I'm just gonna pop this box down because my hand's getting a bit sore. Um, yeah, the box is pretty big, I guess. So a bit like Ravensburger and Clematoni, the these sort of classic brands does have a very big box. So it probably could be smaller, but oh well. Um, but yeah, the pieces themselves are pretty nice. They have a nice gray board backing. They're like a medium sturdy thickness. Um, they hold together really nicely. Like you can pick up sections and even uh, do like a puzzle pickup. So yeah, that's pretty good. There were a few false fits though. Um, not too many, but especially because like this puzzle, there's a lot of bits that look a bit similar, like these borders and the blue stars and things like that. So that, yeah, there were a few false fits. Um, and then the surface of the puzzle is a bit like this box, actually. And if we can see, it's sort of got a linen texture finish, but as you can see, it has a bit of sheen. It's not glossy, but it's not completely matte either. So the pieces were very similar to that, probably a bit smoother on their surface, but they did have a little subtle linen texture finish on them. And yeah, definitely a little bit of sheen. Um, and it would have been similar to what you're seeing here with the box because I normally sit where I am now to do puzzles. So uh, probably would have been a similar experience with that amount of sheen. I can't remember because it was a while ago. And then as for dust, I think there was a bit, but I don't think it was excessive. Again, it was a while ago and I can't remember. Um, but apart from that, yeah, I really enjoyed this one. Definitely recommend for anyone who's into cats. Um, and yeah, I really enjoyed it. So out of all the puzzles I did for the month of November, I've decided I don't really have a least favorite. I actually really enjoyed them all. Some I enjoyed more than others. So I've decided to pick once again, I think I did this during the October roundup, uh, two favorite puzzles. So I've got this one here and also the invisible puzzle. Um, so yeah, invisible puzzle. I, uh, yeah, I chose one of my favorites is the uh, Unidragon iridescent chameleon puzzle. I just really enjoyed it such beautiful quality, so much attention to detail and just so much intricate details, like both in individual whimsies, but also just how it made like puzzle, little mini puzzles or images within the bigger puzzle. I just thought it was so clever and really interesting and yeah, just a really extra fun level of detail to the puzzle. So yeah, I just thought it was really beautiful. Um, yeah, excellent quality, gorgeous image, love the colors, love the, the actual chameleon shape just yeah really enjoyed it thought it was such a cool design and um yeah i'm really keen to do other uni dragon puzzles too and then the second uh favorite one as well not my second favorite equally my favorite i guess is this beautiful wentworth strolling home 500 piece puzzle just thought this was just the sweetest image really love how pretty and spring and cheery it was and just thought the whimsies were so cute and just like uni dragon um just had a high attention to detail and lots of intricate details, beautiful artwork and colors, and just thought the whimsies were really adorable. Um, and just, yeah, really high quality um, and just beautifully packaged. Uh, yeah, they, I forgot to mention, but uh, these come in like a nice sort of, you know, uh, drawstring bag and the whole thing's like plastic free and everything. So yeah, really like that. So very kind of sustainable and 
just very, it feels very luxe, I guess, as well, having this lovely, uh, you know, fabric bag with the Wentworth logo. So yeah, uh, yeah, really enjoyed it and just thought it's, it was a beautiful puzzle, both in the image and the quality. Even though I didn't do uh, a whole heap of puzzles for the month of November, I still think I did a nice variety and I just really think I was spoiled for choice. Like I said, there weren't any puzzles that I didn't like. I really enjoyed them all. And I think I had some really lovely quality ones in there. Like, uh, you know what, I had uh, three different brands of wooden puzzles, which I thought were really fun and such a nice experience. I had a beautiful Ibu one, the uh, Water and Wines one. Uh, what else like just yeah and just lots of puzzles that had beautiful images as well so yeah I just had a really great month uh, had a lot of fun and was really happy with the puzzles that I did get to complete so in the comments below let me know uh, which of the puzzles I did was your favorite and also let me know what puzzle you really enjoyed completing during the month of November if you enjoyed this video, then make sure you show that like button some love. And for more videos like this and for even more puzzle content, then don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. By subscribing, not only will you be the first to know when a new video is released, but you're also helping this channel grow. And you can find me over on Instagram at jigsaw underscore where you'll find even more puzzle content. Thanks so much and see you next time. Bye.